Hello, Frederick. Hello, Ami. It's a pleasure to see you. And uh, for you at home who are watching this right now, thank you for tuning in because we have something special here. Um, Frederick is or has been in the chess scene for a long time. Let's say it like that, gently. And uh, I want to squeeze out as much as possible from Frederick about everything he has experienced in all of those years with most of the different chess players. Now, there's another point for this, and sorry for the long intro, but um, you've written a couple of books, but there is one very, very special book which is going to come out in end of this year, probably. And uh, I'm very looking forward to this, and a lot of other players are looking forward to this. Can you give us a short little idea about what your newest book is about, please? Well, actually, I'm co-authoring it with uh, Professor Christian Hesse, and uh, he's writing more about chess and mathematics. And it is in Drömer. Uh, which is a big publishing house here, <clears throat> and it's in German. <laughs> and uh, I submitted uh, many, many chapters on chess and unusual things in chess. And one section, half, the, half of what I submitted was called Encounters. And I, I discovered that I've met all world champions since, can you guess? Oh, gosh. It's a well, I guess the 70s, I assume, like uh, probably Karpov. No, older. Oh, older, okay. So uh, then it's Petrosian, as far as I know. No, not older. Okay. Uh? Uh, wait, who's before Petrosian? Now you have to help me, please. Okay, I'll tell you. Uh, I actually met Max Oeuvre. My goodness. And yeah, you know, <laughs> it's scary. But anyway, uh, when they discovered this, and I've written about all the world champions and all of them, I met and befriended, except for Smyslov and Petrosian. But all the others, you know, Tal, Spassky, uh, Botvinnik, all of them, Fischer, everyone. So they said, First of all, you have submitted too much material, so we have to cut it down, but we cannot take out anything about the encounters. So we're taking out all the chess. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. <laughs> so the, my part in the book is one encounter after the other. And there, you know, I've written, for example, one page on, <clears throat> on my encounter with, uh, and my friendship with Over. I've written 20 pages on Kasparov, because, I mean, he spent what is surrounding you is partially his uh, doing. Yeah. So there's a lot to narrate about him, 30, 35 years of accompanying him, friendship and so on. So they we're producing this book. They're publishing it in October and it's in German. But as soon as we've got it ready and everything, they're going to do an English version. I wrote it in English because I'm slightly better at uh, writing and formulating in English and then uh, translating that into German with the help of a very uh, talented nephew of mine. Great. Okay. Okay. So we're looking forward to, to this book. We will, every now and then, we will talk about this book, of course, because... Uh, yeah, we want to know a bit more about it and uh, how, when it is finalized. But so since we're at it, can we start with the very first uh, person you encountered, which is Mr. Max Oeve? Yes. Well, he wasn't the very first uh, titled player I ever met. The first, very first titled player I met was David Levy. We were oh, doing gosh. a, okay. we did a, uh, a documentary on computers and chess and so on. Sure. And so I met him. And then the second person was Dr. Helmut Pfleger. Mm -hmm. And that, suddenly I was in the chess scene and uh, uh, I was attending a few chess uh, tournaments. And at one of them in Hamburg, I was introduced to an elderly man. Uh, and he was Max Over. Uh, first of all, we have to uh, 
uh, we have to clear up the pronunciation of his name. It's over. Yes. over. That's what okay. we over. And I've heard you, we, and all this kind of stuff, but it's over. In Dutch, it's slightly different, but over is very close to it. Okay. And I met him and uh, I was introduced to him and uh, he asked me about myself and I told him that I had studied philosophy and he said, what in philosophy? I said, uh, philosophy of science and uh, logic. And as soon as I said logic, he said, oh, you must tell me something about that. <laughs> and he took me into a restaurant and I assumed that I would be lecturing him on philosophical logic, but no, he lectured me <laughs> because he was a, a intuitionistic logician. And this is slightly different from, or very much different from what I had studied. So we ended up, you know, for hours, him teaching me what intuitionistic logic is. And we actually made friends and, you know, he called, he asked me to call him Max. I, I was calling him Professor Over and he said, well, please <laughs> call me Max. Everyone does. And he was a very nice and unassuming person. And then in the evening I asked him, where are you staying? And he said, in Harburg, close to Hamburg. I said, oh, I'm driving past. Let me let me take you home. So we drove to Harburg, to the place where he stayed. And we spent at least two hours in the car outside his flat. Uh, and he started telling me about the games he had played against al and uh, others. And amazingly, he told me all about the games he had lost and not about his wins. Oh. So, and you know how he'd lost and why he'd lost and what had happened and how he had uh, underestimated Al Yechin the second time and uh, overestimated him the first time and, and so on. So he was slightly self deprecating. <laughs> which was interesting. Yes, it is very interesting. Unusual. Yeah, for such a great man. He yeah. was the president of FIDA at the time, I believe. And uh, so, you know, I, I became very friendly with him and we corresponded a little bit at the time on paper mm -hmm. with typewriters. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Can I ask you quickly, how old were you roughly in your... 79... This is uh, when I was born. I, 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 yeah, I was born in 1945, so 55, 65, 75, 32 or something, 33. All right, all right. So you and, became closer friends? Yeah, we became friends and we stayed in touch, but unfortunately he died very soon mm. after this. True. And so I lost a friend. Mm. There is one uh, incident which has stuck in my mind and which was absolutely... Uh, vital to my understanding of chess. Uh, a few months earlier, or maybe half a year earlier, on the airport of Los Angeles, I met Walter Brown, Grandmaster Walter Brown. Mm -hmm. And I knew him and we chatted. And then I said to him, Walter, let me show you a position. I pulled out a position and I showed it to him. It was a sort of an end game position. Unfortunately, I cannot find it again. Cannot remember exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. And he looked, he just cast a glance at it and he said, uh, oh, oh, white's winning. And I said, why? Materials is exactly equal. And he said, yeah, but you know, the pawns are locked and here a white has more break, breakthrough chances. Mm -hmm. I said, no, he doesn't. Black has exactly the same. He said, oh, but these are not important. And apart from that, the weaknesses of the black pawns, of these two black pawns. And I said, but White has exactly the same kind of weakness on his side. And he kept on and on telling me stuff which to me sounded like nonsense. <laughs> uh, he was just I felt he was just saying, go away, I'm tired of this, forget it. And, well, it was an experience with Walter Brown. And when I took Max over home, mm -hmm. I realized I had my notebook and I had the position in it. So I whipped it out and I showed it to him. And guess what Max over did? He said, he glanced at it and said, oh, white's winning. I said, why? He said, oh, breakthrough chances. I said, yeah, but black has... <laughs> And the same thing 
So I realized <laughs> it's just me who doesn't understand what they're saying. Wow. And since then, I have seen so often, you know, grandmasters, and you should, you know this, they sit across each other. Yeah. They don't speak the same language. And they start just pointing to pieces and doing this or this. Or, yes, you know. yes, yes. And uh, they understand each other completely. And they have a, a vocabulary of ideas and strategies and so on, which we don't have or mm. I don't have. Well, that was very, very, very insightful indeed, Frederick. Thank you for, for giving this uh, insight about um, Max Oeuvre. And uh, I'm looking forward to the next episode. Thank you for watching. All the infos to this episode and more you can see underneath the YouTube video. I have everything in the description and the, there is a link to the article about this video too with some more details also about the book, of course. Thank you very much and bye. Goodbye. Thank you.